yes, I can hear you. Let me know so we can begin. I'm so excited to be here. Let me know. Perfect. I'm excited. Happy Saturday, everyone. Welcome to Single, Saved, and Entitled. And I'm so happy to share the revelation of the content that I have here for you today. All right. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I know after this webinar, many of you will have the clarity that you need um, just to get your mind and your heart right, get your mind and your heart prepared before God, right? I know many of you are waiting on God for so many things, and I really do believe that after this webinar, you will be able to sit before God to know, hey, Father, assess my heart and let me know what is going on. All right, but before we begin, let me know where you're tuning in from. Someone already started already. Um, let me know where you're tuning in from. Hi, Michelle Esther. Nice to have you. Let me see. So, oh, you guys start, you guys are quick to the punch. So we have Brooklyn, New Orleans, Zambia, Florida, Chicago, Jamaica in the building, Virginia, Toronto, North Carolina, Germany. Wisconsin, Belgium, Houston. Hi, Mary from China. Oh, wow. Toronto, Dallas, California, Kenya, Elizabeth from Florida, Deja or Deja from Trinidad and Tobago, Detroit, Michigan. Wow. Virginia, Georgia, Atlanta, Barbados, Ghana, Jerusalem. Hi, Joey from Jerusalem, <laughs> London, Trinidad, Jamaica, Botswana. Listen, I'm so happy to have you guys here. So blessed, so honored. And again, I just really cannot wait. So many people signed up. I had to extend the capacity for this webinar. So I'm really happy that you're here. And again, I cannot wait just to share with you guys, all right? So welcome everyone, welcome. We'll give maybe about a minute or so before we actually dive into our content. Um, but welcome, welcome. Let me see who else we have. Kentucky, Botswana, Ghana. Wow, welcome guys. All right, so before we begin, um, let's just honor the Lord in a quick word of prayer. Cause you know, we have to give shout out to the one and only Lord Jesus Christ, right? He's the head of our lives and he is the head of everything that we do. So let's just start with a quick word of prayer. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every woman, every person who is here, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given me the privilege to teach on this topic this morning. Father, we do not take it for granted, the power of gathering in your name. For your word says, O oh God, where two or three are gathered, there you will be in the midst. So Father, I thank you that we're leaning on your revelation, your wisdom, your knowledge, O oh God. Cover these women, cover their minds, cover their hearts, and most importantly, cover their journey with you. All these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Once you're ready, say I'm ready, because I am ready. I'm pumped up, right? Like the Lord really gave me this revelation. And I'm like, I have to share this with my ladies, because this will change the trajectory of your walk with Christ, especially if you are single and you are waiting on God to bless you with your God-ordained um, husband or spouse, right? Or something that you're just believing God for and you're really hanging on to his promises. All right, Marilyn says she's ready. Everyone is saying, Jocelyn said she's ready. Everyone is ready. Let's dive into it. Let's dive into it. Okay. So just a little bit about myself, right? So again, I am Kashina and I am just nothing without Jesus. <laughs> when I say nothing, I am nothing without Jesus and nothing without my family. So I'm married to the most amazing person that I ever met in my life. And ladies, I say that with all honesty. And this is why I'm so passionate about waiting on God to divinely connect you with your God-ordained spouse because I got to a point in my journey where I just, I couldn't have it any other way. I needed God to come through for me in this area, right? So, so for some of you, I know you're familiar with my story, but for those of you who are new, I had an arranged marriage, y'all, like God arranged my marriage. Like back in the day, 
biblical having an arranged marriage type of thing so the lord told me that you know what i have somebody for you and even now i know the lord is saying to some of you i have somebody for you right so the lord said kashina i have somebody for you i'm going to arrange your marriage right but guess what you will not date your husband at all and at that moment i'm like screw say what right because this is like this is some real stuff like i'm like god where i'm from we go on dates okay the lord said you will not date your husband at all and guess what you won't know much about him either right but i need you to trust me to walk into a marriage blindly right and that is exactly what happened so I met my husband when I was on vacation. And I mean, once I came into contact with him, I picked him up in my spirit a little bit. I'm like, hmm, who is this? Is he my husband? But of course, God was a little slow with the confirmation. He did not say a word until I left Jamaica and I came back to the United States. And this was when the Lord began to reveal to me that Rajay was my husband, right? And even a few days after I came back and I was just saying, God, you know what? You, you told me I would have been married in 2019 and that was the beginning of 2020. And I didn't meet this person, like what is going on? And this is why I'm so passionate about women who have received prophetic words regarding their marriage or God has spoken something to you in your spirit about your marriage, because I've been there, right? The entire manifestation of my marriage or of anything in my life has been from the prophetic, my own prophetic words that I received in prayer, right? So I know how it is. And this is why I'm always trying to pour myself out just to help women in this area. Like, let me know your dreams. Let me know what is going on with you because I've been there, right? So I was saying to the Lord, you know what, God? Like, I didn't meet this person. Like, this is an unfulfilled promise that you gave to me. And the Lord said, um, oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did meet that man, right? And he told me that, you know, my husband was my husband and he is releasing us to get married right away. So we began, we, you know, we began planning a wedding in two different countries. And the next time that I saw him, we were getting married. So I did not date him at all. Promise fulfilled, right? Talk about God's divine setup. God is a matchmaker. There is no competition, all right? No one can, can compete with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No one can come even close. So we shared two children together. One I had, my daughter I had before. I met my husband and together we have Nathan. And for those of you who know, I have my, we have another child that was about to reveal the gender, but we have another child on the way. So God is increasing our families and I'm really grateful. So I always start off by honoring how God brought my husband and I together because it took a lot of understanding of how God speaks, learning how to understand Kairos and Kronos time, right? And this is why I'm always encouraging women to make sure that you put yourself in position to understand how the Lord speaks. So I was one of those sisters praying for a family, praying for stability, praying for more, praying for better, praying for a father figure in my home. Let me share a story. I remember having a conversation with my daughter and she said something to me about, mommy's house and daddy's house and that was the norm for her at an early age right she understood or she thought that living in different homes that was the way to go and ladies it was at that point where i had to buckle down and be humble before my daughter at an early age about five or six and i said to her i didn't i didn't do it the right way i did not do it the right way and this is not the norm for you. Will it be the norm for you? And in that moment, I'm like, God, we got to write a new blueprint. Share it in the chat. If you know that you are called to write another blueprint better than the one that was given to you, if you know that God is expecting you to walk wholeheartedly before him so you can change the blueprint, let me know in the chat. New blueprint, new blueprint, right? 
We will no longer walk and, and do things that we've seen or, or parents do, right? We're going in a different direction. We're writing a new blueprint. Amen, amen, amen. New blueprint, new blueprint in Jesus' name. I get it. I've been there. So was that that moment that I had to humble myself before God? And I said, Lord, I am asking for a permanent father in my home, a father figure for her to witness balance, right? So all my single mothers just know that I see you and God sees you. Amen. God sees you. So let me see the ladies who are waiting on God to do it. Let me see the ladies who know that God is a giver of good things. Type amen if, in the chat if you know that God is a God and the blessings of the Lord adds no sorrow. Amen, 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 amen. All right, all right. So let's dive into it. So why this webinar? Why this webinar? So ladies, I too was single, saved, and entitled. And I had no idea what that meant until last week I had an epiphany. It was just like the Lord gave me this grand revelation and it put a lot of insight into the struggles that I had as a single woman, right? And because my job here is to make your process more easy and quicker, I'm like, Lord, I have to share this with my ladies, especially those of you who are waiting on God for a partner, all right? So ask yourself this question, are you single, saved, and entitled. Let's dive into it. So back in 2018, I was in my wilderness season, right? And I was praying to God. And in the middle of the prayer, the Lord said to me, Kashina, you feel entitled. You have a sense of entitlement. And this is my exact journal entry. And if you look at the date, you can see that it was August 17, 2018. And I wrote, I had to work on the sense of entitlement. So when the Lord said that to me, I knew what the word entitled mean, but I did not know how that applied to me until last week. <laughs> Okay, so sometimes God would tell us things, right? And we have no idea. We have no clue what he means. And sometimes it takes us days and weeks and years to catch up. But thank God he is gracious and he will give us time to catch up once we continue to pursue him, right? Or pursue him with diligence. So ladies, this is how subtle and dangerous the spirit of entitlement is. It is very hard to identify it, right? Because again, I needed a revelation from God in order to know what he was saying when he said, you feel entitled. So even though God told me that I had this severe heart issue, I had no idea what he meant again until last week, three and a half years later, when he spoke this um, original word, when he spoke this initial word, I just got the understanding and the revelation as to why my process and my journey was so long, as to why my process and my journey was so tedious. And again, my goal is to create a bridge so you guys can accelerate in this area, amen? All right, so what does it mean to be entitled or having a sense of entitlement. And as we go through this webinar, I need you ladies to be really self-reflective, right? Because if you see that this is you, this could possibly be, be the reason why or process is so delayed, right? Let's get into it. So entitlement or being entitled, it means believing oneself to be inherently deserving of special privileges or special treatment, right? I, listen, each and every one of us, I know we love some special treatment. Like as humans, we, we thrive to be treated speci specially, right? We love privileges. We like to be treated with, with more, right? That's just a part of our human nature. So again, being entitled to something, 
is a part of your belief system. You're believing that you are deserving of special treatment or privileges. You believe that you should be treated with, 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 with something extra, something different, right? Something more. So last week, the Lord was showing me how during my single years, I felt entitled. And what did I feel entitled to? I felt entitled to having a husband. And I'm going to break it down, right? I'm going to pour out myself and break it down just to help some of you in this area. So I thought that I was entitled and I deserved having a husband. And again, ladies, I only understood this three weeks ago. So because of this entitlement that the Lord spoke to me of, right, it caused my heart to be out of alignment with him for most of my single years. Let me say this, ladies, God blessing you with a husband, children, finances, whatever it is that your heart desire is very easy, very easy. The Lord said, I am the Lord, your God. Is there anything too hard for me to do? The husband, is, it's easy, right? God is not losing sleep. Neither is he bursting out in sweat, trying to pair you up with somebody, trying to, to give you the promises and the desires of your heart. Uh-uh, he's not losing sleep over that. That's, e that's the easy stuff. But what is really, really, really hard is the journey, is the process of getting to the blessing. This is where we have to single-handedly deal with the issues of our hearts. And this is where we get most frustrated, right? So again, the process is what God really cares about, not the destination. Everything is easy, right? And the Lord, he's not... He's not guarded when he's giving us good things, but the process of getting there, that is where we have to go through the pruning and the working, and that is where we're most uncomfortable, all right? So let me also say this. When you get to the destination, another process starts, right? Three, four years it took for God to send my husband. And I went through a four-year process of being abstinent, of really honoring God, pursuing purpose. And I had to be pruned and trimmed and, and cut down and, and humbled and all of that in that four-year process. And within a few days, my husband came and we got married within a few weeks, right? And guess what? Another process started. So again, the destination is not what really matters to God because him sending whatever it is that you want or desire is easy, but he is more intentional about how is the posture of your heart during the process that he's taking us through. And we see it in the Bible. We see it all the time, how the process, if we don't have the right mindset and the right motives, that process takes longer than it should. But I thank God that you have sisters like myself and other people who's been through some things and we're willing to share for you to say, hey, don't do it the way I did it, right? Because if you do it the opposite way and you do it the right way, God has no reason to withhold anything from your life, amen? All right, so again, let's focus on the destination, all right? That is the time of pruning. That is the time where God really wants to reveal himself. But unfortunately, that is the time when we're most frustrated. So again, are you entitled? Do you feel entitled? Let's do some heart check. So being entitled or having that sense of entitlement, it stemmed from a dangerous place. Can anyone tell me where do they think the spirit of entitlement comes from. It has a greater leader, right? Which spirit do we think? Okay, I'm seeing pride. Wow, I love it. Pr abandonment, wow. Thank you for that. Hurt, neglect, pain, bitterness. Thank you for sharing. Wow, very good. Love it. And I all rejection, pride and self-righteousness, Jezebel, parent wounds, childhood teachings, control. Wow. Love it. Let me tell you guys, 
All of it is true. But what the Lord revealed to me is that a sense, having a sense of entitlement just last week at work, teaching. And the Lord is like, I, I, I'm going to stop you for a little bit because I'm going to drop some nuggets, right? Right in the middle of my lesson. The Lord said to me, having a sense of entitlement stems from a religious spirit. Ouch. All right. Having a sense of entitlement is stemmed from a religious spirit. And to be honest, if we're not careful, most of us have a pinch of this, especially ladies, be honest with me, especially when you're honoring God, you're serving him, right? And you're doing everything that you can to show like, I am, I am with you. If we're not careful, right, we move out of faith and we shift into the religious spirit. Why? Because we know that God is a giver of good things. We know that the, God's hands is not light. So once we do what we need to do, we know God is free to say, hey, you, you this open the floodgates. We know that that's God's heart. But then what is our heart? behind us wanting to receive that thing. Let's go deeper. So again, we know that God is a good God. We know this, right? God said in his word that, you know what? You know that I'm good because if, I'm, if I was willing to give up Jesus, my beloved son to, 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 to be beaten and, and die a horrible death. So we, you know, so you can be in unison with me Will I not grant you all things? But again, if we're not careful, we have a feeling that because we're following Christ, we deserve these things. My lovely ladies, the Lord said to me, Kashina, I, you had a heart of entitlement the, your entire season of singleness, three months short until I got the revelation. And I'm going to share that a little bit later. The Lord said to me last week, the only thing that we are entitled to, what is that? What is the only thing that we're entitled to? Clear as day. The only thing, not salvation, because sal judgment, judgment. That's the only thing that we are entitled to on this earth. Ladies, stay with me. It goes deeper. So the spirit of entitlement whispers in your ear, hey, you, you've been serving God, haven't you? Hmm. You've been honoring God with your body for years. You've been walking in purpose, doing what you need to do in the name of Jesus. God needs to pay you for this. You deserve this. Whatever you're believing for, you have done the work. You deserve this. So again, entitlement stems from the spirit of religion, from that religious spirit, because you feel as if you deserve these things because you put in the work to get them. Guys, I wasn't out here initially honoring my body because I wanted to. I thought that was the way to go to get married. That is how I started my journey. And this is how we have to be careful of our motives and our intention because God had me wait longer than I should have because I came in feeling this way that God will honor me because look at me being abstinent, all right? God will, and I'm seeing a lot of women saying, Lord, forgive me. I'm telling you, ladies, he knows where you're at. And that's why he's like, you, ha you have to help. You have to share this so we can free a lot of people and have you guys come back in alignment with him. I've been there, right? So again, a religious spirit is works-based and not relationship-based. Following me? So the spirit is telling you that God should see it fit to reward you of a husband because I deserve this. I deserve to be married. 
But again, ladies, the only thing that we deserve, that we are entitled to, is judgment. So I found this amazing um, gospel versus religion chart on the internet, and I'm going to skip through most of it, but I, I want you to take a look at the third one. It says, under the religion, co uh, the religion column, it says, I obey God in order to get things from God. Let's be real. Don't sometimes we have a little bit of that in our heart? I obey God in order to get things from God. Right? Versus the true gospel that says, I obey God to get God and enjoy him. Ladies, I, I live this. I lived this thinking that I am in faith when I'm in entitlement. So if you think that being abstinent for 10 years, because I've seen it, I've seen it. I've read comments, emails, I see it. I know some of us have this struggle. So if you think that being abstinent for 10 years makes you more deserving of a husband than someone who is abstinent for only two months, then my friend, we have to look into the spirit of religion. And you know what? When I got married, I was a little grieved because my husband only waited a few months while I waited a few years. And for some reason, I thought that my weight was more valuable. And I was a little like, God, that's not fair. How is it that he said one prayer and I came days later, literally days. When I say days, days. And I have been praying, fasting for years and I had to wait. And I always say to him, you didn't wait. You didn't wait for, you know, you didn't wait. Cause I think that there is something that I did by waiting for years that it's more honorable You see what I'm saying? No, his heart behind him praying was authentic. While the heart behind me praying was entitled. Two prayers, two different outcomes. All right, Woo! Lord help me Jesus, right? But again, guys, there's nothing wrong with praying aggressive prayers, but again, or, or motives. And that's when we see that our prayers are not answered because we pray with the wrong motives. I remember the Lord said to me when I was in prayer fasting, my God, I need a husband who's gonna mow the yard. You know, who is going to do this? And don't you see that I can't, like, I'm a woman. I shouldn't be doing these things. And the Lord said, I am the prize. I am the prize. So half of what you're doing, you're doing because you think I will see it and honor it. I am the prize. So if you're not doing it for me, don't do it. Right? Whew. Guys, let me tell you, our hearts behind what we do is everything, is everything. And the word that the Lord gave me is woman in line. And I'm just doing all that I can do to make sure that you guys are perfectly aligned with God. 
all right, so that his genius can flow effortlessly, all right? So how do we know that we have a spirit of entitlement? So let's just take it a little bit deeper. How do you know that you are walking and operating out of the spirit of entitlement? And here are some signs, and we won't go over all of them, but the ones that the Lord dropped on me right away, I'm going to share those with you guys. So the first one, how did that happen? Now, let's just say it again, and I mentioned this before, you're waiting on God for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and nothing. And you know of somebody who waited for a shorter time, six weeks, and that person gets married. And now you're sitting there like, wait, what, what's going on? How did that happen? Right? Or time of waiting doesn't mean you're closer to the promise. Because God's heart for each and every one of us are different. If you're like, hey, I'm pleasing God. I'm walking in purity. She barely just got saved. She's not even saved, saved for real yet. Like she's still working out some stuff. And now she's married. God, did you forget about me? Did you forget about what I've been doing to serve you? How long I've been serving you? And she comes in. She was just in the clubs two weeks ago. And now she's married? I don't get it. If you can identify with this, there's a sense of entitlement there. You've been waiting longer. You've been doing more. So you may have deserved this more than someone who just started the process because you were in line. Next one deep level of frustration. Now, if you are anything like me, year after year, you are waiting and nothing is happening. You thought it should have happened already and it didn't. And you start to ask yourself questions like, what am I doing wrong? Like, what am I doing wrong? I gotta be doing something wrong. What more can I do? right? And that is because, again, the spirit of entitlement, it's so close to that religious spirit. It's all about to what more can I do? What am I not doing? And it's I, 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 I. What do I need to do? Someone says, stop putting my business on front street. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Been there, sis. That was my business too. And many of our business as well. I'm telling you. Right? You start asking yourself these questions. What, 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 am I doing something wrong? Now you start to see stuff, you know, something is wrong with you. And that leads me to the next point. Again, what more can I do for this to happen? How much more should I fast? and pray how much more should i should i should i do this do i need to increase my time spent in the word like what do i need to do for this to happen because again it's all about you and religious relig the religions the religious spirit is very self-centered and works-based, always proving, doing. Ouch, I'm stepping on my own toes. Because ladies, I just got this last week. But I had to go through the burnout. It did not make me, I got married, but I went through the burnout. And I'm, I want to make sure that you ladies don't experience the burnout. Let me give you guys the process and you can tell me if you can identify with this. The entitlement process. Somebody, Libby said, this webinar is getting personal. <laughs> oh man, Shawnee said, you're stepping on my face, head, body, everything. I get it. 
be sad. I feel attacked. I'm in the grocery store repenting. I get it. Been there. So this is the process that I've, I've gone through. And you will go through these three stages. First, tears. You cry tears before God. Lord, I, 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 I need somebody, God. And guess what? They're honest tears. Those tears reflect where you are in the process. Honest tears and tears are okay. God, I want to get married. God, I want to have children. God, I want to have a family. But here is where it gets tricky. If those tears are followed up by frustration, then you already know that those tears were a little peacock for God to see. And I'm being real that you really needed that thing. And because he didn't respond in the time that you think he should have responded, you are frustrated because you have unmet expectations. So you cried the tears and, and you poured out your heart and the Lord honored that. But what came after is you got mad. You're getting upset. Year after year, nothing, right? God, I should have been married already. And sometimes I'm, I'm just gonna throw in the towel. Like, I'm, I, 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 God, this is too much for me. Been there, done that. And the last, that, the last stage, release. Guys, the tear stage could last five years. The frustration stage could last even more longer than that. Because God has to take you through that process until you get to the release stage. And most of you are here, and I'm going to tell you what the release stage is. This is where you get so worn down and so tired you don't have the mental capacity or strength to continue. This is when entitlement has failed you. At this stage, you're burnt out. You're waving the white flag. You have lost the fight. You're tired. And this is when entitlement has to release you because now you develop the mindset that, Lord, <laughs> if I don't get married, that's okay. I'm fine with it just being us, Lord. And you mean it. You mean it. Lord, if, as a matter of fact, I don't care. Like, I don't even, God, it is whatever. I'm not praying for no man. I'm, I'm just tired. I'm just tired, God. Like, that's it. And this is when the Lord has to bend us out of entitlement, bringing us through this process. The tears, the disappointments, the frustration, this is God's doing. If you have that sense of entitlement, he will break that out of you. God is a good God. He's going to prune you. And it hurts. Entitlement releases you at this stage because you have released the idea that you deserve to be married. At this point, you understand that Jesus, if it's just us, I'm okay with that. I'll be content with that. Guys, I went through the burnout. I went through the burnout 
sick. <laughs> and once that got to the, the, the release stage, the stage, the, the process where God had to send me to say, hey, you, you, you have some things in you that I, I need to take out of you. And because of that, I'm going to send you in this process. Because the only thing you're entitled to is judgment. And you have to understand that I am all you need. And guess what? You're not even entitled to my love because I give that to you freely. Ladies, God will re release your husband, whatever it is that you're waiting for, without entitlement. When we feel entitled, and if God blesses us in that state of mind, then we get in position to judge others. You see, my friends, you're not married because you're not living the right way. You need to live how I live. You need to fast how I fast. And God will send your husband. Again, judgment and religion. If God had to bless you in your place of entitlement, you would think it's because I was abstinent for 10 years or I was celibate and you are not. That's why I got here first. Right? That's not the message that God wants us to send. So again, he will make you go through burnout. He will prune you from the sense of entitlement. So we understand that his gifts are never dependent on our works or our actions. It has nothing to do with us but all about him and if you know it's all about jesus type jesus in the chat god is all about you jesus jesus amen it's all about jesus amen amen it's all about jesus not nothing about us because again, what we do, we do because we love God. Not because we want to show him or push him to release his hand. So again, you getting alignment by understanding that your works don't move God. You know what moves God? Your faith and his faithfulness. That's it. The faith that you have and his faithfulness. You have faith in him because he's faithful. That's it. So again, ladies, I'm here to help you skip the process of tears and frustration. It's time to release. Ladies, it is time. Do not hold yourselves up. It's time to release. You don't have to go through the burnout. You don't have to go through the, the three stages or you can cut them short by pushing yourself, using the word of God, to get to that release stage. Ladies, after I went through the process, the tears, the frustration, and then the release, the tears and the frustration part took me three and a half years. And I went through the release stage for three months. And then my husband showed up. 
Because at that point, God had no reason to extend the process. Because at that point, I'm like, listen, I said to my, listen, we, we gonna have to rock it. Okay, me and my daughter, I'm like, we gonna have to depend on Jesus because I don't know if a man is coming at this point <laughs> and we're gonna have to be okay with that, all right? So guess what? It's gonna be me, you and Jesus and that's okay. As soon as I, I hit the release stage, end of August, early September, 2019, and I met my husband in December because my heart was just free. Like I didn't care. Like I was just so tired and burnt out. I'm like, Lord, I can't even pray about this. That's how you know you get burnt out. You, you're not even praying for a husband anymore. You're just sick. You're just like, God, it is what it is. I'm done. I'm living my life. And if it happens, it happens. But I am done. The Lord has to take you through that stage. Is there anything too hard for me, says the Lord? Nothing is hard. Nothing. It may look hard, but it's not. But how is your heart? How is the posture of your heart as you're going through the journey? So again, ladies, my hope is that I can build a bridge for you guys to get to your promise easier and faster. So if you desire to come into alignment with God, this is your first step. If you think you have a spirit of entitlement. Amen. All right. So ladies, with that said, for those of you who would like to go into further teaching, especially when it surrounds your marriage, you may have received a word from God. You may have had a vision from God and you're not sure, you need some clarity, you don't know if it's God, you don't know if it's the devil, I'm inviting each and every one of you who are at the stage where I was to marriage and be prophetic. And this webinar is for all women who are waiting, desiring marriage. Some of you have received some insights, whether through dreams, visions, impressions from the Holy Spirit. If you think that God had revealed your husband, is he a brother in church, someone at work, someone who you saw on Instagram or other social media platform? Or maybe it's, it's, it's somebody you've never seen and you need some clarity around this. Because this was another realm of confusion for me. <laughs> because God had used the prophetic to connect me with my husband. There were some things that God told me that my husband would say for me to confirm that in fact, it was that person. And one of those things were to ask him how many children, I had a dream and in the dream I was asking my husband, how many children you want? And he said to me, um, as many as God would give. So everyone that I met who wanted to pursue me, I always asked that question. How many children do you want? Four, three. And in the back of my head, I'm like, hmm, something is not right here. Prophetic word. Knowing how to test these words. Knowing how to authenticate these words. And if I had to ask my husband, like I asked him this question, how many children? And he was like, as many as God would give. And I'm like, okay, because that was something that the Lord had given me prophetically. Get a few questions. I'm going to go through a, a short Q&A, okay? So this masterclass is the anchor that will keep you sound and grounded as you navigate through your single season. 
all right? You will have clarity regarding visions that God gave you for your marriage, having the confidence that you will not be derailed, that you will not be deceived. We'll talk about the grace that you carry. Not every woman carries the same grace. And you know the grace you carry. So when somebody comes pursuing you, you already have that information. We're all called to a different level of grace in how God will connect you to your kingdom partner. I knew the grace that I carried. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about testing the spirits. There's a spirit behind every prophecy. And your job is to be able to discern what spirit is speaking. You cannot afford to come into agreement or, 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 or agree with lies. Fancy lies. Did that. Been there, done that. We're going to talk about, and this sister reached out to me, and I had to include it. She was like, how do you heal from false prophecies? And this was near and dear to my heart because false prophecies have the ability to damage and derail our faith. So in the webinar, I'll teach you strategies to bounce back from false prophecies. And how do you receive and steward prophetic words from God concerning your marriage? We're all called to be good stewards. How do you properly govern the words that were spoken into your spirit? So ladies, I'm going to go through some Q&A, but I'm really looking forward to having as much of you as I can join um, for Marriage and the Prophetic February 19th. So many of you have already registered and this shows me that you're taking the step needed to, to get the clarity that you need so your process can be easier. That's all, that's all it's about because none of us know it all, right? So ladies, thank you guys for joining me. We're gonna take some questions. Um, Rajay, can you put the link for Marriage and the Prophetic? Someone just asked that question. Can you put it in the chat? All right, let me get some questions. And we'll be on for another maybe five minutes or so. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy to be able to share my heart with you ladies, especially in this area.